is your name, please? My name is Steve Martini. What is your name, please? My name is Steve Martini. What is your name, please? My name is Steve Martini. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Steve Martini and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening. As you know, we play a game of deliberate misrepresentation here in which four presumably smart people try to find out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To tell the truth is brought to you each week by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. Right now, let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Burden. I'm Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And I'm High Gardner. I can attest that these people are telling nothing but the truth. Now, these three people all claim to be Steve Martini. Of course, only one is the real Steve Martini. The other two have assumed that identity, and of course, they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, in front of you, there is a copy of an affidavit. Will you please listen while I read it? I, Steve Martini, am a barber, and I own three barber shops and a beauty salon in and around Washington, D.C. I have cut the hair of many famous people, including General Marshall, Press Secretary James Haggerty, and Vice President Nixon. Perhaps the most interesting thing about me, however, is the fact that I am the personal barber for President Dwight D. Eisenhower. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Steve Martini. Now, we'll get along with our game and just game panel. These three people all claim to be Steve Martini, President Eisenhower's personal barber. Remember that the real Steve Martini is the only one required to answer your questions truthfully. Now, you will each question until you hear this signal, and at the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to register your vote as to which one, in your opinion, is the real Steve Martini. And let's start tonight with uh, Polly Bergen. Polly? Number two, uh, do you charge less for a haircut if the man doesn't have very much hair? No. You don't? It's the same, huh? Same. Doesn't seem fair somehow. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, could you tell me what uh, do you charge President Eisenhower for a haircut? The same as we charge anyone else, because out, uh, when a barber goes out to give a haircut, he pays the same price. I see. Uh, are you a uh, Democrat or a Republican, sir? I'm uh, in the middle of the road. Oh. The bar. <laughs> Republican? I'm the bar. You, you lean more toward being a Republican. Well, do you find you have less to talk about when you're talking to a Democrat? No, they're both very interesting. Uh, <laughs> number three, uh, could you tell me, where does General Marshall live? Where is his home? Well, his home is in Arlington, Virginia. Ralph Bellamy. Number three, you seem to have a kind of a suntan there. You didn't get that on the golf course, did you? Yes, I play a little golf. You do. Uh, I wonder if you could tell me, number three, where is the wart on James Haggerty's neck? <laughs> I have never seen that wart. <laughs> <laughs> number... Uh, Two, who is uh, President Eisenhower's private secretary? Miss Whitman. Number one, answer the same question. Mrs. Whitman. Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Number two, uh, do you also shave President Eisenhower as well as cut his hair? Sometimes. Number one, does he allow you to talk while you're shaving him? Sometimes. Does he talk to you? Oh, yes. Number three, could you tell me what idiosyncrasies General Marshall, Vice President Nixon, and Mr. Haggerty <coughs> share while they're in the barber chair? Yes, well, well, I would say that um, of the, mo the most talkative is Nixon. Uh, does he tell you stories? No, he does not. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number two, I'm going to repeat a question that was asked before. Are you a Democrat or a Republican? Are you asking me? Number two. I primarily 
Emma Baldwin. <laughs> okay, you're trimming on that one. <laughs> now, uh, number two, you say you cut the hair of Jim Haggerty. Now, customers generally talk to patrons and vice versa. Has Haggerty got an ulcer? That I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, again, who is Murray Snyder? Murray Snyder is one of the many politicians around there. Number one, who is Murray Snyder? I'm sorry, hi. Polly. Gee, I want to know where that ward is. <laughs> uh, number one, do you know about a ward? I don't recall ever seeing one. Ralph, are you sure that he's got a ward? <laughs> I'm not up there. Oh, uh, <laughs> by George, it's interesting, though, isn't it? Uh, number one, get... Oh. Time is up, I'm sorry to say, but that makes it time to vote. So, panel, without consultation, will you please mark your ballot? And in so doing, select either number one, number two, or number three. May I have the ballots, please? Now remember that the challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. That means if they fool our entire panel, they may divide from Jarrett Hall $1,000. Here is Polly Bergen's ballot, and she votes for number two. Why, Polly? Well, I felt that the gentleman, uh, number two, knew more about the personalities in Washington than I could get from the other two gentlemen. Ralph Bellamy selected number three. What was your reason, Ralph? Well, it was that wart. Uh, Jim Haggerty <laughs> hasn't got a wart. The number three oh, looks so... <laughs> I know him, and I don't think he has a wart. The, the number three was pretty uh, sure of that. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle selected number two. What was, what was your reason, Kitty? Well, I think number two looks trustworthy enough to go near the President of the United States with a razor. <laughs> and High Gardner voted for number two. I, what was your reason? Well, I picked on two. I was, I was a little confused between two and three, but I knew uh, that it might have been one of them because I've never seen a barber yet who had hair. <laughs> <laughs> Which can mean that it can only be number one. <laughs> well, all right, folks. The votes are in now, and our panel cannot change their collective minds. I hope you won't at home, because right now, let's find out which one of these gentlemen is President Eisenhower's personal barber. Will the real... Steve Martini, please stand. <laughs> well, there's the reputation for all time about bald-headed barbers. <laughs> Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My real name or adopted name, Albert of Fifth Avenue, knowing probably the country over, and I design and make to pays for men. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Ralph? He didn't make one for number one. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Number three, who are you really and what do you do? My name is Victor L. Anfuso, and I'm a member of Congress and a Democrat. <laughs> I, and if, I, if I may, I'd like to apologize to President Eisenhower and Mrs. Eisenhower for not being at the White House tonight at the reception which, are, which they are giving to congressmen and their wives. I thought it best to come here to make this bipartisan. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, gentlemen, I think you'll agree it was worthwhile, too, when you realize that there were four <coughs> incorrect votes for a total of $1,000 from Jared Hall for you gentlemen to divide. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Good night and good luck to you. <laughs> Now may we have our next team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Alan Freed. What is your name, please? 
My name is Alan Freed. What is your name, please? My name is Alan Freed. Now, panel, will you listen while I read this affidavit, a copy of which you find in front of you? I, Alan Freed, am married and the father of four children. My first job was as a disc jockey playing classical music on a small town radio station. But I am better known these days as the king of rock and roll. I created the phrase rock and roll in 1951 and was the first disc jockey to exploit the music under that name. I have played the part of myself in three motion pictures, and I'm glad to say that the crowds at our recent opening at the Paramount Theater in New York broke both the police lines and the single-day attendance record. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Alan Freed. Now, we'll begin our questioning in just 60 seconds to play the game. These three people, panel, remember, all claim to be Alan Freed, the king of rock and roll. Remember once again, please, that only the real Alan Freed is uh, required to answer your questions truthfully. Again, you'll each question till you hear the signal, and at the end of the questioning period, you'll be required to register your vote. This time, let's start with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number one, what caused you to name rock and roll music rock and roll? Was it something onomatopoeic about it? Did it sound like rock and roll, or what was it? Well, just, uh, just sort of came to me, uh, all back about four years ago when, uh, rock and roll really started to come into itself. I kind of felt the bee and, uh, the rock and the roll of it. I coined it, stuck, the kids liked it. Number two, could you tell me what actual physical damage was caused to the Paramount Theater on that famous opening day? Well, I believe, uh, the total physical damage was about 30 theater seats. Is that all? That's all. The box office wasn't damaged? I think the box office was damaged from the crush outside. Hi, Gardner. Well, number one, you were once a classical music disc jockey. How would you pronounce the name T-C-H-A... Tchaikovsky? I... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number one, what is the name of the manager of the New York Paramount? Oh, Bob Shapiro. Uh, number three, what is the name of Frank Sinatra's father? His name is Mr. Sinatra. Uh, number one, do, you know his first name? do you know his first name? His first name? Frank no, Sinatra's I father? Never, never come to my attention. Uh, number three, uh, where did Colonel Tom Parker, Elvis Presley's uh, manager, get his commission? What branch of the Army? In the Army. <laughs> uh, number one? Polly Bergen. Number three, could you tell me the, the Platter's first big record? The Platter's big record now? No, their first one. I'm sorry. Number one, could you tell me the Platter's first big record? Send a love. Number two, could you tell me the Platter's first big record? Uh, only you. <laughs> that isn't the one I remember. Uh, <laughs> and number one, um, don't you feel a little guilty sometimes? About what? Uh, about bringing about this whole terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, uh, I dare say if you, uh, ask the originators of Charleston, the Black Bottom, uh, something like that, uh, well, of course, it might be of, just as pointed a question. None of us goes back that far. No, uh, I Ralph don't know Bellamy, that. number three, uh, you say you've made three pictures. That's right. Uh, what were the pictures? First one was Rock Around the Clock. What studio did you make that picture? Columbia. 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 What, what's the address of Columbia Studio? Well, the studio where we worked was, uh, Sunset and Gower. Uh-huh. Who's the director? Director, um... Joe uh, Levin. Uh -huh. Number one. What was the second picture? Uh, rock, Rock, Rock. And who directed it? Uh, Joe Tig. What studio? Columbia. Same place. Same place. Uh, number three. What was the third picture? Third picture was uh, the one that broke all the records at the Paramount and uh, still breaking them all over the world now. Uh -huh. Namely, don't knock the rock. I didn't ask for a plug. It just <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number three, uh, what, are your, what are your children's ages? Well, I have one that's 11. You said number three, didn't you? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Ronnie's 11, Danny's nine, Carol's three, and Barbara's one and a half. Number and with that, our time has run out, panel. I'm sorry to say, but it is time now to please mark your ballots with no consultation and select, once again, either number one, number two, or number three. May I have the ballots, please?
I get the right one? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first we have here Polly Bergen's ballot as usual. This time she votes for number one. What's your reason on that, Polly? I hate that dirty laugh in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a feeling I'm wrong now, but I voted for number one because he knew that uh, Bob Shapiro was the manager of the Paramount Theater. Ralph Bellamy selected number two. Your reason, Ralph? Uh, I haven't got a very strong one. It just mm -hmm. it's, uh, a... Just a sort of an impulse, I'm afraid. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle has selected also number two. Why, Kitty? Well, I felt that number two looked like the only one that had enough stamina to have four children. Why, <laughs> 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 Gardner voted for number three. Hi, why? Well, because I think he looks unhealthy enough to be a disc jockey. <laughs> All right, the votes are in. Our minds are made up. I don't know whether yours are or not, but we'll find out how close you were. We'll find out right now which of these gentlemen is the king of rock and roll. Will the real Alan Freed please stand? Thank you very much, Alan. I think Ralph should remember me because he opened the door for my wife for a taxi cab about 10 years ago here in New York on a rainy night. And Certainly should remember, remember that. Very much. <laughs> All right, number one, tell us who you really are. <clears throat> my name is Lou Zeidler. I'm an insurance broker, and I specialize in insuring television shows. This insurance covers these shows against fraudulent and libelous statements. <laughs> And number three, your name and occupation, please. My name, <clears throat> Charles Dodsley Walker, and I'm organist and choir master of the Church of the Heavenly Rest on Fifth Avenue at 90th Street. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how we stand. There were two incorrect votes worth $250 each, which means a total of $500 from Geritol for our team of challengers. Divide it, enjoy it. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night and good luck. Thank you. Next team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Mrs. Arthur Whittaker. What is your name, please? My name is Mrs. Arthur Whittaker. What is your name, please? My name is Mrs. Arthur Whittaker. Now, panel, will you please listen and follow along while I read you this affidavit? I, Mrs. Arthur H. Whitaker, am married and live in Las Vegas, Nevada with my husband. Our jobs are strangely complementary since I run a roulette wheel and deal 21 in the gambling casino at El Rancho Vegas and my husband runs a pawn shop nearby. When I am not working, I spend part of my time prospecting for minerals in the mountains and part in the study of the Indian philosophy of yoga. I swear that the above statement is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Signed, Mrs. Arthur H. Whitaker. Now, we start our cross-examination in just a minute. These three people all claim to be Mrs. Arthur H. Whitaker, who runs a roulette wheel. Panel, our time is short. We may have to cut you short. Let's start with High Gardner. Well, number one, which of the famous hotels on the Strip has cottages named after racetracks? I'm not sure, but I believe it's the Desert Inn. Uh, number two, can you answer that? That is the Desert Inn. Number three, can you answer that? It is the Desert Inn. Uh, number two, uh, I would like to ask you this question. What famous movie actress was killed in a crash in a mountain that is visible from Las Vegas? I couldn't tell you. Mm. Polly Bergen. Number three, what does the phrase crimping a deck mean? Crimping a deck? Yes. I wouldn't know. Number two, what does the phrase crimping a deck mean? We don't use it. Number one, what does crimping a deck mean? That's bending the cards. And number two, could you tell me, does a dealer hit a soft 17? A soft 17 can yes. be hit, yes. Uh, number three, could you tell me, what is the double zero on a roulette wheel pay? Uh, 35 to one. Uh, number... Ralph? 
Uh, number three, uh, in case of a tie in 21, uh, what, what happens? It's a push. No one... A push. Uh, is there any rule... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You say we're the, we're the dealer and the... Yes, player. yes. Oh, I'm You're sorry. The dealer. Yes, the dealer. The dealer wins. The dealer wins. Yes, exactly. Uh, number two, is there any rule about uh, drawing or standing? You mean, uh, so far as the dealer's concerned? Can you at will uh, continue to draw, or must you? Must you? Well, you must stop. Uh, house rules, of course, are set depending on where you deal. But at the El Rancho, you must stop with a picture and an ace. Uh, with your, or rather, with your uh, um, ace, with your picture and seven. Excuse me. Kitty. Number three. What game can you win the most at in Las Vegas? Roulette. And what can you lose the most at? At any table. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, do you do physical yoga? Uh, not, uh, well, it's, it's yoga, yes. You do physical yoga. You don't just go into the philosophy of it. Oh, no. You do physical yoga. Number three, how long is an article kept in a pawn shop if you keep on paying whatever you're supposed to pay? Four months. Number two, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Four months is correct. You can keep an article four months. Yes. Sir. And then it's sold. Well, yes. Or is it, what happens to it? Well, it can be sold or kept. And I have a few items that were left in my husband's pawn shop. <laughs> Time's up. It's time to vote. So once again, panel, without consultation, mark your ballots, if you will. You are selecting, remember, either number one, number two, or number three. May I have the ballots, please? Again, first is Polly Bergen's ballot. She votes this time for number one. Why, Polly? Because number one is the only one who knows that crimping a deck means to mark a deck. Ralph Bellamy selected number one. What was your reason, Ralph? Uh, number three uh, gave what I consider to be an incorrect answer to uh, 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 a tie, which is a standoff, if I'm correct. And number two disqualified on something else. I've forgotten now. Uh, <laughs> Has it an answer anyway? Kitty Carlisle selected number one. What was your reason, Kitty? Number one has the honest face of a croupier. <laughs> <laughs> and High Gardner voted for number one. Well, I did because she's a blonde, and blonde makes gamblers uh, work uh, a little bit better and spend more money, I think. <laughs> well, it looks like the choice is unanimous, and there's no chance in changing it now, so let's see if it's unanimous for the audience as well. We find out now which of these ladies runs a roulette wheel. Will the real Mrs. Arthur H. Whitaker Please stand. Hundred <laughs> percent score for the panel. Number two, who are you really and what do you do? My name is Greta Smolo. I'm a housewife and mother in Westport, Connecticut. <laughs> Thank you. And number three, how about you? I'm Miss Seal Edelman, tax investigator with the U.S. Treasury Department. <laughs> well, as you can see, panel, there were no incorrect votes. You did well on that, but of course, we still award our team of challenges $150 from Geritol. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Good night and good luck to you. say, I was not informed, panel, before the show, which one of these was the real one in any case tonight, and I was guessing rather badly here along <laughs> with you. I had the young lady at this end up here, the, uh, the tax investigator, <laughs> docketed as the, uh, as the, uh, the right one in this last round. So you had a good Las Vegas suntan. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I was fooled I mean, by what that. Heard yeah. first. That's, that's, that's what got me. You don't get a suntan in Las Vegas. The only place you get, you get faded on the crap table and you get uh, tanned when you leave. That's something else you get. <laughs> I'm afraid you laughed over the end of that. He said you get tanned when you leave, <laughs> which is quite true. Well, it has been fun, and I will say that you certainly came through in beautiful style, panel, on that, that last round, getting the whole bit. And I guess our time has just about run out, so good night, panel. Good night, bud. Good night, bud. And good night to all of you nice people who played along with us. Until next week, this is Bud Collier reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Travel arrangements for To Tell the Truth are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships.
To Tell the Truth is a Mark Gibson, Bill Cogman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.